All right, folks, in this show, we're trying something new. We're calling it Watch Me Work. Troy Miller is going to take you through some post-processing on some of the images that he's recently shot. So stand by for that. This is Twitter. All right, one of the biggest questions that we get on This Week in Photo is post-processing. How do I do it? What What's the right way to do post-processing? As it turns out, there is no one right way to do post-processing. Uh, but Troy Miller, who's done literally, I'd argue, hundreds of thousands of images over his career, is going to take you through shortly or quickly how he does some post-processing. Troy Miller, man, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, buddy? Just doing. sitting here, ready to work. You ready? <laughs> you ready to work? I'm ready to watch you work. So it's gonna be good. So uh, let's do this, man. I, you know, without further yapping and ado, let's dive in. What are you gonna show us today? First of all, um, I have a shoot that I did for a friend of mine for his band. We shot a band video, so we took some photos as well. And this is basically the calling of the raw photos that were shot during the shoot. So there's a there's a we're going to go through, I'm going to color code them. I'm going to pick winners. I'm going to pick the ones I want to delete. I'm going to show that process. Awesome. All right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Have at it. Good. Let me share my screen. There we go. All right. So here's my folder. So what I do is I always create a folder that I'm going to put my job into. And then I subfolder that out depending on who's shooting with me or what other files that I may have. So these are all the files that were shot that day. Uh, for those of you that are aware, you can see that they are Sony ARW files. Because I do like my Sony, regardless of how much I complain. <laughs> and I'm going to use Photo Mechanic. So I'm going to drag that folder, drop it into Photo Mechanic, awesome. and open those files up. I've always wanted to I, see how Photo Mechanic works with, in a pro's hand. So this is gold. Yeah. Um, I love Photo Mechanic because it's fast. And that's one of the things that if you don't have Photo Mechanic, you'll, you'll notice right away that it is pretty quick. So what I do is, is I color code my images. What's it doing? Don't, don't misbehave. All right. This is why we do things live so mm -hmm. that you can see them fail before your very eyes. Yep. Huh. Every time I color code it, it, it disappears. Maybe it's because you're, you're screen sharing. Maybe it's uh, well, let's playing try. havoc with the video processor or video card. Let's try that again. Oh, yeah, there we go. All yeah, right. So nothing like color. a little restart to fix everything. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, you know, <laughs> if you knew what my week was like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> you need to do a control alt delete on your car, basically. Right? <laughs> there is, there is. So what I do is, is I go through and I pick the keepers. And I use keys one, two, or three. So I don't really care about the colors. It's just the order they come default, which is we'll call that pink, red, and orange. So I do this really fast and I'm just literally picking the keepers. So let me go in full screen. So I'm gonna go through and, and I'm gonna go, let me go back, hit zero to take the color off and see. And I'm just really looking for ones that aren't terrible. Mm -hmm. I see like these are blurry. I'm just going to ignore those. I'm just going to pop through, pop through, pop through. Like, I don't like those. Maybe, maybe. And I'm just hitting the number one. Like, I don't like that one. Uh, keep going, keep going. Pick that one. Keep going. Let's get past the drummer. Oh, he's doing push ups. I like that. So I'm not being super picky. I'm not zooming in. I'm not picking focus. I'm just like picking ones that I like and just basically ignoring the ones that I don't. So this is this is how I would call. Oh look, there's me. There's me. Nice. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't shoot these. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> yeah, now you know. <laughs> now in this, this is the speed that you would be culling these at. Like this, it is. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you're yeah. marking as you're culling. Are you you're you're flagging the ones that you think are decent? I am. Yeah. If you watch in the lower right hand corner, as I go, it's like keep keep. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the magenta keep, fuchsia color. Yep. Keep, keep. No, see, that was bad, but I'm not going to worry about it. Do I like the bend? That bends better, but I'm going to say keep. So then what I do is then I'll close down, I'll close down the big browser. There's a whole bunch of images. We don't need to go through them all. Ooh, maybe some of those. That was so fast. Edit. That was, I mean, the app is fast. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And these are um, A7R Mark III images. So they're big. 
you know they're big. Mm -hmm. So okay, let me let me grab some of these because I, I these these are like some of my favorite shots that we did right here. Like these I like, these I like. We're just gonna pick all these because I know I'm gonna want to go through. I'm just quickly choosing them, and I do that. I'll just like I want all these, and then what I'm gonna say is turn off everything that's not filtered. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so now what I've got is I've got sort of a condensed and curated version of the entire shoot. I go back, and the nice thing is, is now I've got some next to each other. And I'll say, I'll keep you with the next color. We're going to use red. But I'm not going to keep you because I don't need to look at, I think that's me. That's my butt right there. You got a shot of my butt. <laughs> nice. And I'll go, I'll keep you. And I'm going a little bit slower. I'll keep you because I can crop. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. Uh, I like that one better. I like that one better. Sure. Do you ever zoom in to like to like double check focus on the ones that you like on this mm -mm. pass? I don't. Okay, no. Cool. No, I don't. Because I will I will check them later if I really need to. But I I've got a pretty good sense of what's in focus and what's not. And I'm gonna do this one more time. So then then you'll see. So like I like you. I like you. No. See, I like that one better. And I'll bounce back and forth. Um keep that one keep that one see i like this one but i don't like that one and then let's just jump to the to the end so i'll go i like that well i see i don't like his foot in that one right there so mm -hmm. i'm gonna say no yes yeah so I'm, that's all i'm gonna do i'm gonna go through and pick, ooh, i like that i like that i like that and then i'm gonna go and remove all of the first ones we picked so now I'm down to basically the best of the best. I've gone through twice. And how many images did you start with, roughly? Um, I don't know. Let's go back and look. Uh, 200. Okay. There's 200, 200 images. And if yeah. this was a wedding that you were editing, how many? You'd be doing a, a similar kind of culling process? Yeah, absolutely. And we would start off with like 3,000 and end up with 500. And it might take 30, 40 minutes to go through and get it nailed down. That's crazy. Uh, that's crazy. We're more picky yeah. once you get to this level. Yeah. So now I'll go through, and I know what I'm going to use these for. So even if this one is slightly out of focus, I'm okay with that because it's it's going to be small, social media, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But let's just do it like this. Let's just set the zoom up to do times two. And I just hit Z. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go through one more time and, and say, yep, that's a keeper. Yep, that's a keeper. The... The challenge is, though, the A7R Mark III, it doesn't show me 100% like it would in Lightroom. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see it's a little pixely around the eyes, but it gives me an idea. And I usually don't zoom in. I'm, I'm usually pretty happy with that. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay, I'm happy with those picks. So now what I'm going to do is I would literally select... I would turn off my final selects, which are the reds, right? Mm -hmm. Those are my reds. This is everything that's left. I would select them all, and I would delete them. Now, this is my working copy. My my, uh, All the originals are backed up to my Synology, which gets then copied to the cloud. So I have these stored somewhere else, but these are my working files. Because I don't want to import images that I'm going to throw away. That's mm -hmm. just... If you wanted to, you could say, well, the reds, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm making a mess, that the reds and the, and the pinks, for example, are my picks. So I'm going to keep those, and I'm only going to get rid of uh, the ones that I didn't choose the first round. So those would be the ones that are unmarked. So I'll turn off the pink, and I'll turn off the red, and I'll turn back on all the blanks and I would delete, you could delete those. So then you basically have your first run and second run if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everybody kind of does a little no, bit. No, Troy, John Doe in the chat is asking, okay, this looks great, but when you say you delete the rest, are you deleting them permanently from your hard drive or do you keep a copy of all the images from the shoot in perpetuity? I'm deleting these from the hard drive. I do have copies of them that I keep forever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. That's definitely important to know. Good, good. Okay. So they're not going away. You're not losing the shots. You're just choosing to ignore them for now. Right, right. Okay, got it. So let's imagine that I deleted all those because this is actually my working file, so I shouldn't be deleting them. Um, 
So then what I would do is this, this folder would now have maybe 50 images in there. Mm -hmm. And then I would take them and I would drag them and I would drop them into Lightroom or Capture One, whichever one that I would work in. Mm -hmm. And they would be imported into Lightroom. And then here are, ooh, look, I, because I renamed them, Lightroom lost them. So I'm gonna tell it to find them. This is the, uh, this is the live workflow. <laughs> yeah, I love it. This is real world right stuff. Now. Oh, where are they? Where do they live? So while while you're finding those, so you so you did your culling, your initial culling in in um, mm -hmm. Photo Mechanic, and then you're bringing them into Lightroom for for final post processing. Where does Capture One fit into your workflow? Good, good question. Currently, for my wedding work. Uh, Capture One doesn't edit yet. Mm. It's Lightroom that does all my editing. Everything okay. else is Capture One because I like the control that I have with Capture One. Okay, got it. There's some so, other pieces of software on the horizon that may may fill that role, but right now it's Photo Mechanic Lightroom and Capture One, right? Yeah, yeah. And there, I mean, you could have a whole discussion of the difference between those two, and I love Capture One. Yeah. All right, so there it is. I told it to go find it. So there's my images. So that's that. We'll, we'll pretend those are my picks, mm -hmm. and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit them. So I know as I go through, I got my little pen, my Wacom tablet pen. I can't do anything without that pen. Oh, I keep hearing that. God, Aaron Aaron Nace told me about that years ago, and he was like, "I can't live without my pen." So I went out and bought one, and it's still new. <laughs> I still can't. I'm a mouse guy. I can't get my brain around using the pen. Yeah, but you gotta, you, you have to. It's fast. It's so fast. And one of the things that that really works is, let's say this image right here, right? Let's say I wanna, I wanna edit this guy. And this is what I would do for the job. I would go through and I would crop him. And like, I don't like that right there. I'll take that out later in Photoshop. I have a bunch of presets that I've created over here. Depending on how I think this shot should go, you know, I may pick. Here, let's pick. Uh, I know I have. I know I have it in here somewhere. It's called Warm Grunge. I don't know where I put it. Oh, here, Warm Crunch. We'll use Warm Crunch. Ooh, I like that one. And then I'll open those blacks up a little bit more. So you know, this side of his face is maybe too bright. So what I'll do is I'll switch to the to the paintbrush, and this is where the tablet comes in. Right, mm -hmm. reset that. I'm going to bring the highlights and the whites way down. And then now I can just brush in there and the lighter I brush because the pen, the, it's pressure sensitive. Right. And then I can come in there and I can tune that. You can dial it back. Which, which tablet are you working with? I'm using the medium Wacom tablet. It's the wire. It's all wireless, right? Cause I think you might be, having, you may have the same one I have. You can do wireless. Yeah. I keep it. I keep it plugged in because the way my desk is, I can do that. Oh, okay. So now I can, I want to, I want to dodge that down. I'll burn that down a little bit, burn that down a little bit. And I might here. I'll create a new burn, and let's just let's just burn this out, just for the sake of it right here. Yeah. Make that a little bigger. And when, that's when why would I you like send? Try, what would you send the image over to Photoshop? Is it like if something if you love the image, but there's something egregious in it that you need to get rid of, like a giant hair sticking out of his nose or something? So right. you, you take it into Photoshop for that, or would you would you use Lightroom? to take that out no i would take it into photoshop okay. um that's that's where the workflow is the simplest mm -hmm. so you hit command e and let's and that's a lot of that's another question so you never the, when you command e to send that image over to photoshop that's a one-way trip you're not bouncing back and forth between photoshop no and i Lightroom. am bouncing back and forth Absolutely. oh you do Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the round trip thing is amazing, and it works with uh, Capture One as well. So, I would grab. Let's see. There we go. Let's just do darken. And I'm using a Shuttle Pro Two version two on my left hand. That's all pre-programmed, so I can just click buttons, and I'm switching to the crop tool or oh, the nice. stamp tool, which I can't. Which is some people work and will tell you, oh, if you hit command, whatever, that's the stamp tool. I have no idea. 
Oh, really? Interesting. Because I, pro <laughs> I programmed it to this button. <laughs> so if someone drops you behind enemy lines and gives you a Mac, it no. says, process all these images or <laughs> you, <laughs> you're screwed, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll be screwed. Yeah, <laughs> That's I'll be screwed. awesome. Well, it's, a, it's a testament to the customizability of this stuff. So. Yeah. So there you go. So th and this is, this is one of those things where the pen really comes in handy is if I want to say burn down something, I want to darken this. This is a, a soften light black pen color mm -hmm. and I'll set the opacity to a hundred and the flow down to like 1%. I can come in here and I can, I can burn and just bring down little details, bring this down a little bit. It's really low. So let's make it more obvious. There we go. Maybe I want to burn this down right here. And the thing about the pen is if you watch my uh, history over here, when I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm brushing like somebody would be sketching. Mm -hmm. So I'm very lightly taking the brush and I'm drawing in these areas to create layers of burning and dodging. Nice. Yeah. And I could do the opposite with a lighten with a brush with a lighten blend mode and white. And I can bring up details too, like as if I want to brighten up his forehead a little bit around his face. And I'm, I'm noticing, Troy, that you're working you're working on the back background layer. You're not working on a layer, <laughs> a separate layer. Would you normally do that, or would you work in layers so you can step? I back? do. Uh, you know, you what? work without a net, then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I trust myself. <laughs> no. You know, I, I I don't do real heavy deep Photoshop work multiple layers, hundreds of layers. I should do that more often. And and when I'm working on a competition print or something really complicated, I will make a new layer. Okay. In an, in a situation like this, I'm not going to do that. This is a five minute edit. Yeah. And my feeling is, is if I got to come back and re-edit this image, I don't care. It yeah. takes me five minutes. I'll come back and knock it out. You got know, it. Got it. Yeah. It's not a composite. Yeah. I know Renee Robin, another TWIP pro member, she, she'll have, uh, I, I want to say conservatively, it, it, dozens of layers, maybe more than that, you know, and with these gigantic, you know, uh, just ridiculously large file sizes. And well, she did make a comment. I, I think it was either in, I think it was in the Twit Pro community about building backgrounds now, where she literally has to build the background and save it. And that's one, what is it, uh, PBS or PSB or whatever the, the big Photoshop file is. And then she builds another piece and another piece because she's yeah. building them so big. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not I'm not doing that. So for me, I'm all about edit and commit to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I love it. So if I hit uh, Command S at this point, that saved my image. And then I have a hotkey that takes me back to Lightroom. And there is the image I just edited. So that's the before and the after that's beautiful that was, look at that and that was yep. quick just like that and it's stacked i'll stack it i move on to the next image what's the command for stacking in lightroom oh you have a hotkey you have a, you have a button. uh if you're in grid mode mm -hmm. if you're in g yep it's i don't even know what it is to be honest with you it's like sh it's like shift g or command g or something it'll automatically stack yeah. but it only works in grid mode and i'm never in grid mode you have to be in the library module but i'm always in the develop module with the thumbnails Interesting. but if you pop into photoshop and then pop back it automatically stacks them so then i i flatten that stack and then i go to the next image that i want to edit you know, my hotkey, my crop. So let's just say I want to keep this in the original format for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make this one. I know I'm going to want to make this one like yellow snow. Yes, that's intentional. Yellow snow is the name of that. <laughs> hey, I, you got to name your stuff fun. You Don't know? eat the yellow snow. <laughs> right, right. Okay, I like that. And then I'm gonna put a linear or the grid. or the brown snow, you know, or any any yeah. snow that's <laughs> other than white. <laughs> right, right. So I'm just throwing some oh, gradients. Nice. In Look there at that. To yeah. Draw that attention. So, like this cord, if I wanted to keep him in there, that would be something I I might go back to Photoshop. But if I'm done with this, I just go to the next image, and I'll say apply previous because that's pretty close. I might recrop. Boom. Go to the next image. You know, this guy, I want to make him a uh, coal miner because I like that really blown out, metamorized look. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually being a little extreme. So 
I don't even know what's in that image or what's what's in that effect. So we'll leave it there. I like it really dark. I'll go to the next image. God, you, just, you learn so much watching somebody work. It's crazy. So if I if I'm editing an image and I like the way that it's going, so let's say that I want this image to be really contrasty. So I'm gonna get it kind of cropped. I'm gonna crop nice and big. I'm gonna pull the blacks down because I really that's what I want. I just want all those highlights to show up. I might open the shadows, which open his face a little bit. So then I go to the next image. I have a hotkey programmed on my Shuttle Pro to do previous. Mm -hmm. And I just hit that button, hit the crop key, and I move. Go to the next one, previous, hit the crop key, and I move. And this is it. That's that's how I would edit, just like that. I would wow. go through. And I'm like, ooh, I like that. But you know what? I want that to have some color. So uh, it's probably a split tone because it's black and white. So I go over to my, where's my split tone? Don't have hotkeys for that. So yeah, there it is. It's a split tone. So I'll add some more saturation. I want it to blue in the shadows. I like the blue in the shadows. Yeah, there we go. So I go to the next one. I go, ooh, that's kind of the same thing. So I do my previous and I recrop. Boom. And I go to the next one. And I'll do that. Same thing there. Hit my crop button. And I'll take I'll take the screamer out. There we go. Boom. Stuff like that. I mean, that's what I would do. Linear gradient because I want to bring his back down. Try to make it look natural. There we go. Bring the brush in. Let's brush this down. Make a new layer. Let's reset that. Uh, let's bring up the shadows and the exposure a little bit. Let's see if I can get his face to come out. Yeah. Oops, I can get his face to come out a little bit. Ooh, too much. There we go. And boom, I'd go to the next one. Ooh, I don't like that one. So, cause this guy's in my way. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I mean, literally, that's 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 exactly how I edit. Just keep jamming through one at a time. Um, that's got my fantastic. That's presets. fantastic. Then, then, what happens after this? So let's fast forward and say that you're done. You know, you've you've edited them all. And would you? And well, rewind a little bit. When you are doing this, would this be in one session, or would you like? Okay, I'm going to get through 100 images. Then I'm going to go take a break, and then I'll come back either later that day or the next day. Or do you force yourself? to go through the entire process for a group of images in one sitting? No, I'll edit them until I'm over it. And then I'll, I'll come back mm -hmm. and pick up where I left off. So like on a wedding, I may have 500 images to edit. And I don't want to sit and go through that whole thing. It takes me like an hour, hour and a half. I don't want to do it in an hour. Um, I actually stand at my desk, so I, I just don't want to be doing that. Yeah. I'd much prefer to, to do them for a little bit. I can walk away and I come back. It's easy to pick up where you left off because it's just the next image. Yeah. So, yeah. So in this case, uh, I don't really do a lot of starring at this point or color coding or anything in Lightroom because technically these would be all of my picks already. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would do is I would do like a command A, select everything, right click, export. Here's all the exports that I've created, depending on what I want them to be for. If I'm going to create a sloppy border for them or if I'm going to, you know, just output them for a reorder or I want them to be a JPEG, 100%, whatever, I've got a preset made. And you just select them. So let's just do like, let's not do 200 of them. Um, let's see, export. Now this is going to be, this is a watermark. So I'd say Instagram, right? You're going to put my logo on the right side. So boom, you see up here, a little folder appeared in the top right corner. Yep. And there's my images right there with my logo in it. Done. Just ready, like ready. And then where do you upload them from, from this point? Let's say this is a wedding. Where would they go? These would go onto my server mm -hmm. where uh, they would go, boom, to Walter. Walter. Because we love Walter. <laughs> and I would put Walter and they would go under my image archives uh, not IC archives. There we go. Oh, under backups. I just rearranged all this uh, image archives, and there's everything that I've shot since 2004. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah, yeah. They would go in there, and then from there, this is where we can order from. So, like, here's here's a job or client. Everything's sorted in there, and we would upload from there. Wow. Okay. So yeah, the folder's named what's gonna by the name of what's gonna happen to those images. 
Yeah, so some go into an album, some of these get black and white, sepias, you know, if I make sloppies out of them, if I, if I prepare them for Zenfolio. And I actually have actions within Light Earth and Photoshop that does all this for me. Wow. So, yeah, it's very complicated because you can run a Photoshop droplet after you've exported out of Lightroom. And then it runs a whole Photoshop set of actions, which is one of those things that Capture One doesn't do that I'm kind of part of my workflow i got to figure out yeah very cool that, that, yeah very helpful man that's 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 your life right <laughs> <laughs> every feels like it's every day <laughs> time to make the donuts <laughs> <laughs> i love it all right well cool well switch back to your uh to your camera so we can see your your mug and then we'll oh, close wow. this off it's in one of these screens there it is there it is there he Perfect. Is. That was great, man. That was good. That was thank you for doing that. That was very helpful. And you do it sitting right there at that machine, sipping tea, listening to music, yep. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does your music influence the speed of the edit? Like do you have to put on some some high BPM music in order to get through it? <laughs> yeah, that's all I edit to. I edit to EDM. That's all I edit to. <laughs> that's awesome. To the beat. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how you edit <laughs> i love it yeah it's weird i don't like if you like some people say like if you look back at an edit or an image you can remember the song that was playing when you edited that image do you does that ever happen to you no because edm all blends together and there's no words which is exactly the way that i like it yeah yeah it's the soundtrack yeah. the soundtrack to life well, I have a friend of mine that she, all her editing that she does, well, she used to do, was to uh, sappy country love songs. Oh, good grief. Really? On purpose. Yeah, that's what she wanted to do. Somebody shot my dog and I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a cat now and she ain't bad. <laughs> Copyright. Don't take it. I love it, man. Cool. Well, thanks, Troy, for doing this. Uh, and yeah, that's awesome. You are at spicyjello.com. That's where your commercial sort of fine art stuff is. Artsy stuff, yeah. If people want to find you and hire you for weddings, are you all booked up for the next two years or so? Almost. Yeah, we're actually booking pretty fast. That that, that would be imageryconcepts.com. But 2019 is booking pretty good. Uh, 2018 is almost done. So, yeah. Wow, that's good. Congratulations, man. That's awesome. All Thank right, you. man. Well, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in Twit Pro. Of course. All right, man. Take care. We'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. This is Twit. <laughs>